Hello everyone and welcome to this new Katia Design Talk, the webinar series where we explore the latest trends, tools and techniques in industrial design and engineering using Katia, the world leading software for product development and innovation. My name is Fabio Ballari and I have the pleasure of hosting two Katia Design Industry Process Experts We will share their insight and best practices with us. So welcome to Nick McFerran and Julien Lachichy. Hello. Hello, guys. Together we will talk uh, about Class A modeling and the possibility to innovate in this domain with Katia and 3D experience. So Nick, can you start <clears throat> by introducing yourself? Yes, of course, Fabio. Hello, everybody. My name is Nick McFerran. I've been a professional modeler for almost 30 years, with 13 years working in the British Automotive Design Studios in the Class A surfacing department. I joined DASO System about seven years ago, and I enjoy supporting Isomsurf and Katia surface refinement in the Katia Design IPS team with my colleague, Julien. Hello, everyone. My name is Julien Lachichy. I joined DASO System a year ago. Before I was class A modeler in the automotive industry for almost 20 years, let's discover together the new capability for class A surface modeling. Very well. So um, over the year, we observed an incremental advancement in surface refinement technology and class A surface definition. However, there hasn't been a revolutionary breakthrough. A software solution like Isensurf has become the industry standard due to their completeness in terms of feature and capability. Indeed, the industry is so slow in embracing change. So my question is, why do we need to change when the status quo is, seems to be working well? Well, to survive in today's global and highly competitive landscape, companies need to readjust their strategies more often. So from a management perspective, agility is key. Maintaining customer loyalty and brand identity is vital for a sustainable business future, meeting demanding customer expectations, balanced with adapting to changing industry regulations is like walking a tightrope. The renewable energy revolution and global sustainability mm -hmm. in general has had a huge impact on the world of design. Increased global competition and many new startups are putting pressure on the traditional OEMs. And designers must now build sustainability into their products from the very beginning, thinking about longevity, end of life recycling, and using recycled materials with the right green credentials. It's becoming much more complex very quickly. And another huge change in the way people across all industries worked was suddenly forced upon us when COVID struck and sent everybody home. Businesses suddenly had to address their concerns for data security and working on <clears> the <throat> cloud, and employees had to embrace the work from home culture, adapting to a more flexible and informal approach to day-to-day -day tasks, and some found it easier than others. And finally, new 3D technologies and modeling processes have opened the door to fresh ways of producing previously impossible shapes and styles through additive manufacturing. Mixing together fresh modeling techniques like sub D, Bezier, and nerves with complex patterns has become commonplace, and it's even expected by the consumer to reflect their demands for beautiful, innovative products and holistic consumer experiences. So with all these changes, what are the challenges facing the OEM today? Uh, Fabio, achieving consistent and precise surface finishes, all the product is a significant challenge. For this, class A modelers must respect design intent while integrating technical requirements. It requires careful control of various factors such as tooling direction, draft angle, minimum fillet, curv curvature analysis, and surface highlight. OEMs need to keep innovative in their process. Surface refinement technique and technologies are continually evolving. This step can be long and costly. That's why OEMs need to optimize their workflow to improve the productivity while maintaining high quality standards for their customers. Maintaining consistent surface quality for large scale production is crucial because they have to keep market share. And also a new way a new need to integrate sustainability for the very start of the design process, OEM must comply with rigorous ecological regulation, which is very important moving forward. Okay. So um, regulation and all those constraints 
Uh, now I have another question. How and with which resources can this company innovate and go forward and remain competitive in this highly challenging market? OEMs have to use the right tools to inspire and not in their creativity. They, they must capture and capitalize user skills. They need to collaborate with the rest of their business to remove wall and silos. Solution can be concurrent engineering. It's about overlapping processes, reduce time, avoid sequential over the whole attitude. For that, Nick will present ISM Design Experience, our new tool dedicated to CAS and class surface modeling. <laughs> Thanks, Julien. Yes, this is the ISM Design Experience, or IDX for short. It's been written from scratch to appeal to CAS and Class A modelers. You can see how easily I can navigate the model with mouse menus, and it looks great from the start. I can bring in my engineering data, and I can bring in my sketches so that I can uh, trace over those sketches very easily to construct my very, very first curves. So uh, let me uh, do a stretch view over the glass house. So a lot of these features will be very familiar to ISOM Surf users. Uh, using control points, I can easily trace over the sketch. But for my second curve, I'm going to use curve points. So rather than guessing where the control points have to go, I can just literally position the curve where I want it to be. And I'm given the order that I want. And it's very easy for me to tweak these curves to nudge them into place. Now using a swipe selection, I'm going to make a blend curve and putting on a curvature plot, I can very quickly uh, grab the handles here and slide it into place, getting that nice fluid real-time feedback. So I'm building in a lot of the intelligence into the features like uh, what curves are attached to, what quality and connections that I want the curves to have. And then when I make small changes to the parents, the, the original curves, the blend curves are going to update themselves. All right, this is the notion of soft parametric associativity. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I wanted to explain a little bit about how we manage all this associativity and parametrics. So here the model is a little bit more complete where we have the, the bonnet and the fender. I've attached them to what we call frames, they're groups. Okay, so we can organize the model and break it down into logical zones. What I can do is with the pause button, I can actually temporarily switch off the soft parametrics of the fender. And here I'm gonna swap out a curve that's shared by both parts. So you can see that the hood has changed itself to the new curve. And if I hit play on the fender, the fender then updates itself. What this means is that we can ensure that we have a nice smooth workflow if we're working with a large model. We don't have to update all of it all the time. We can just focus on specific areas like the wheel arch, for example. Here, I'm gonna call up my, uh, my dialogue just to move the wheel arch curves out at 50 mil in Y. Okay, you can see that the fender is just waiting to update and if I hit play, it updates itself. So you have the full control on when it's gonna be updated uh, which power is going to be updating in the car? So. Absolutely, yes. So you can build in that uh, organizational structure into the model just to help keep it flexible. And of course, uh, don't forget, we've got multiple undos, which is, uh, which is uh, of course, very familiar with Gatier users, uh, not, uh, not necessarily ISOM surf ones where we just have the one. IDX really is a joy to work with. Um, we have these beautiful built-in shaders which have been carefully created to quickly reveal the shape of our surfaces just with a, a single click. We also have the useful mirror and perspective modes which actually use the same shortcuts as ISOM Surf, so it's very familiar to me. And these beautiful uh, more matte finishes uh, with an alabaster or plaster finish. This gray one uh, uses the exact same algorithm as ISM Surf, and this clay color was specifically tuned to show surface imperfections. And on the end, we have the highlight, and you can see there's a little, I need to make a little tweak on the hood there. It just <laughs> makes it yeah, really obvious that uh, I, I need to fix that. Yeah, visualization is hyper important, uh, right? Because you, it's really changed the perception you have uh, of the shape. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Visualization just gives us that instant feedback to make the judgments. Moving on a little bit, Fabio, here, uh, I just wanted to explain a little bit about Omni features. This is a flange upon which I have projected the curve to make the slash feature on the side of the car. The flange remembers things like its angle, its length, its references, and any crowning that I put into it. 
that means I can just grab it and change it. Now the model goes red when it's waiting for the, the children or the reference features to update themselves. I'm using a, a smart update mode again to make a, a more efficient workflow. So you see I'm tweaking the, the crowning here and then the other surfaces update themselves. And also all the projections are being done. So if we take a look in the side view, what I can do is I can, those curves that I projected onto the flange, I can just go back to them. I can pick them from the spec tree or from the graphics window and grab them and make my modifications. This control point in the middle, for example. And then I can even change it uh, in the, the blend area further forward. So you can change the style real time and everything is updated. You don't need to recreate patches, connect patches back. Is it? Right. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. You you can work in an explicit mode if you want to, Fabio, where yeah. everything is uh, separated. But it's uh, with IDX, it's really easy to make these flexible and parametric models where the surfaces remember what they're attached to and the and the design intent that you've built into them. It's a real game changer. I think that as soon as you taste the associativity, then you really move forward uh, very quickly because you save hundreds of hours of remodeling and uh, and cut on cut operation. Yeah, for <laughs> sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, it is. It takes a little getting used to, um, but uh, once you get used to it, it's uh, it's it's really enjoyable. Another great value to IDX is, uh, of course, we don't just use IDX on its own. We use all the other apps like uh, ISM Shape Design or Imagine in Shape. Here I've got some ISD fillets in pink that I brought into my model. We can customize our interface just to bring in all our favorite features. Um, so here my two fillets are overlapping each other and they're crossing over at that yellow plane. So this is a very common situation where we have two fillets blending away in a fading edge arrangement. So I'm now using natural sketch and I'm, I should be drawing with a stylus, but actually this is my mouse. As you can see, it's a little bit wobbly. But it's a really nice feature that I can use my natural sketch to effectively mark up my surface model to help me decide or maybe discuss with colleagues how I'm going to approach this problem. Yeah, collaboration remotely especially is super important right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, collaboration on 3D experience, uh, it's, it's really easy to do. It just works straight out of the box. It's, it's, uh, it's a great experience. So for this fillet, what I decided to do was split it in half and merge it together as it faded away. So uh, I constructed my surfaces with four-sided curves and attached G2 continuity across the boundaries. Switching to the shiny blue shader here, I can have a look and get a quick, uh, quick review of how that's looking here. I had to blend it out at the end with an offset just to balance the, uh, the tangency. But these are parametric features, and I've attached uh, a parameter to the tree, which I've called flam rad, flame radius, because the French call this a flam. And right. I'm going to make the uh, radius of these uh, fillets a little bit smaller. Watch what happens. There we go. So I've made those much smaller fillets cordially. And you can see there's, I need to make a little bit more of a tweak here for that offset curve, just to balance it to get rid of that little s. But you know what? That's OK. Um, it's a parametric model, so I can just access my offset and just change the value and then update it again. So can you imagine the hours that you need to do this work done in an explicit modeler? Yeah, no, that's a very, very good point. Uh, these sorts of uh, little changes that take a, you know, they don't sound like they're going to take a long time, but in the explicit mode that, you know, you do have to, you do have to delete and start over many times, not all the way back, but at least you have to take a few steps back to, to move forward again. Having parametrics and associativity really helps to accelerate those uh, iterations. And especially those surfaces are not flat surfaces, they are sculpted surfaces. So we have a pretty kind of unique technology in the market where we can sculpt on top of the surface we still be connected with the input curves and everything update rightly right yeah that's correct it's that's it's a wonderful correct. mix of kind of free form with parametric and the soft parametrics allow you to control that in an easy way um, another very flexible way of modeling is to use sub D. So here in this example, I've brought in a rear view camera, which is actually from Imagine in Shape. So this is our fantastic sub D modeler. 
Okay, not a lot of people know that this is actually uh, useful surfaces. It's actually nerve surfaces. So I can easily make uh, an ISD advanced fillet between the catwalk bezier patch and the, uh, the sub D of the rear view camera. Then, so just create a, a bezier fillet on top of two inputs, which one is the subdivision surfaces mathematics and the other was a bezier uh, class A surfaces, right? Yeah, that's right, Fabio. It's just CATIA. Uh, CATIA doesn't really care where it's coming from. It allows us to use any any geometries that we that we like. Uh, also, of course, being on 3D experience, we can bring in that engineering or the hard point information very, very easily without importing and exporting. So you just load them and you have access to the full package of the car. That's exactly right. Okay. Uh, another uh, super feature that I like to mention is the, the ISD gap command. This is a, a major time saver. So here, if you take a look at the, uh, the charge filler flap, I'll put the highlights on there for a second. It's actually quite a complex uh, piece of modeling there with two flanges, the gap and mm -hmm. careful fillets. But using just a simple 2D sketch, I can project that on the side of the car and using the gap command, it will automatically generate all that for me in one super feature. And it's it's an associative feature too. So if I make a change to my A surfaces, this complex geometry will then update itself. Mm -hmm. So those are out of the box feature, but uh, you know you can build also your own feature uh, with knowledge templates, with visual scripting, all those tools that are inside the, the 3D experience that you can combine with class A stuff. Absolutely, Fabio. And uh, don't forget the very high quality visualization that's built right into 3D experience. So this is a real time visualization, but we also have very accurate uh, global illumination ray trace images like this beautiful one you can see here of the car in gray. So um, and this this images without export. So it's building app. That's right. This is just from live rendering, just another CATIA app that we can access at any time throughout the design process. Okay, so if I change uh, slightly the fillet or the, the, the fading edge, I can visualize it directly, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. It's, it's, uh, it's just at your fingertips uh, whenever you need it, on demand. So, so I've shown you... <laughs> shortening, wow, okay. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Go so. So this is the this is this is all I wanted to share with you today was about the Katia Ice and Design experience and how it can accelerate your class A processes with innovative sculpting tools, mixing sub D, sub D, Bezier and NURBS approaches with a great interface and smart omni features and parametrics and the integrated visualization and even virtual reality on demand. IDX really is a fantastic uh, class A modeling tool and it's all fully integrated on the 3D experience platform. All right. Thank you, Nick, for, for this uh, in introduction and demo. Uh, thank you, Julian, as well. Uh, now, why, while you are showing again the demo, uh, I think it's time to open the Q&A session. So please um, type your question in the comment tab and uh, our expert will answer them. Don't be shy. Take benefit of those two superpower experts of this new. There is one question, I think. Yeah. It I is easy to, for an, an ISM user to, to switch in IDX. Well, that's that's uh, that's a great question, Julian, and, and you and I are quite well placed to do it because that's exactly what we've done, isn't it? Um, ISM Surf and IDX are very different uh, pieces of software designed to produce the the same result. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on the experience. Uh, you can use IDX in a purely ISM Surf way, in a purely explicit way, if you want to, um, but. Uh, with all the associativity and parametrics built in, it's it's true. You can you can make a very sophisticated and flexible model that really uses that power. So um, it it, dep it depends on the individual, really. 
they can embrace the parametrics and the associativity of the CATIA style approach, or they can continue with the ISMSURF approach, or gradually, you know, use whatever they want to as uh, as they learn with the with the tool. You know, as they get more experience, they can add more and more sophistication. That's certainly how I've done it. All right, thank you. Great. You use morphing by tracing the curve. Can we use uh, morphing by tracing the curve? Uh, well, that's imagination, maybe the question. Yeah. So, um, well, we, we we could approach that in various ways. Um, we can do morphing by trace curves in imagine and shape. Definitely, mm -hmm. we can do that. But in um, I would use um, ISOM shape morphing to do some uh, global modeling approaches. So there are morphing capabilities in IDX, but uh, more precise and maybe in a production environment uh, for overcrowning um, or loading of surfaces, I would probably use ISOM shape morphing for that. Mm. We also some kind of uh, global modification like curve modifier box, uh, uh, global point and stuff that helps also to to drive a little bit those curves i think the question was yeah we can, we can do some fast morphing too yeah okay that's, that's the curve all right help we answer the questions uh, as a new learner which approach you would suggest isem or idx <laughs> um <clears throat> I, I can't. I can't really answer that. It, it depends what you have. If you have both available to you, um, I suppose uh, you know I, IDX. It would probably be better to start with IDX um, because. How old are it, you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, if you're in the market, go for IDX. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think so. Because it's got just, uh, because it's a part of a much bigger family of apps. Um, IsomSurf is a wonderful tool. It's still very, very popular and still being developed by, by Dassault it. System. Um, it's it's used all over the world. So IsomSurf is here to stay. But IDX offers a, a different way of, uh, of approaching your surfacing uh, department, your surfacing processes. Okay, thank you for the question. Let's keep uh, two minutes more. Uh, if there are other questions, we are right on time. Does IDX do? Uh, does IDX do everything ISM Surf does? Um, the the answer to that, well, I, IDX and ISM Surf, they're not a like for like swap out. So on 3D experience, you have lots of different apps and the, all the apps work together. So, I mean, IsomSurf's got the advanced tools, it's got reference manager, it's got VR, it's, it's got the real-time rendering. Those are all add-ons to IsomSurf where IDX is just one app that, uh, that you get in your role. So when you're in 3D experience, a user has a role and the role includes a bunch of different uh, apps that they can use like, like uh, ISM Shape Design or IDX or Imagine and Shape with live rendering and so on and so forth. So you can't quite compare IDX to ISM Surf you know, standalone. You've got to consider IDX in the role and with its, with its uh, brothers and sister apps uh, that, uh, that really um, then it can address all of the ISM surf workflows. Mm -hmm. All right, so we already spent 25 minutes with our experts, so I think it's time to close. Uh, so uh, thank you for joining us uh, today for the Katia Design Talk. And a special thank you to our guests, Nick and Julien, uh, for sharing their expertise insight with us. We hope you find this webinar informative, engaging, and uh, that inspired you explore new possibility in industrial design and engineering using Katia. So remember, you can watch the replay of this talk 
in our Katia Creative Design and Styling community and continue the conversation with Nick and Julian and other experts in the field. Simply register for our community and gain access to well resources of insight and best practices. It is, it, and it is free. We appreciate your participation and feedbacks. Um, feedback, and we will look forward uh, to seeing you again at our next Katia Design Talk. Until then, have a great day. Keep innovating with Katia. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.